Hello, welcome to the Encore. My name is Ernesto Alaniz, pastor at Flint City Church. I'm Wes from the Rock Church. I gave my full name, didn't I, Ernesto Alaniz? No, you said Ernesto Alaniz, the pastor. So I, I don't know if it's Pastor Wes, like it, you know, it gets it gets. You're supposed it's, to match the cadence I give you. So you said your whole name, the pastor at the Rock Church of Fenton. Wes Morris, the pastor at the Rock Church of Fenton, Michigan. <laughs> welcome. I went to the Mott Community College. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hello, bro. What's going on? A lot, man. All right. I, <laughs> I got... Hold on a second. <sighs> All right. I got something for you. Okay. Okay. We did... What did we do? Video games. We did video games. I, f I feel like people are going to be mad. Um, I've got a new one for you. It's going to put you in a terrible position. <laughs> it's going to put you in a terrible position, but I think you might come stronger. Okay. Because you'll believe in it more. Okay. This comes from a current uh, new movie or something coming out. Okay. okay. So this, this comes from this, in which a multiverse, I believe, will exist. Okay. Who's the best Batman of all time? Funny you should ask. Um, <laughs> oh, over the, over the last seven days, I have watched seven Batman films. You have? In seven days? In s I did not know this. I did <laughs> not know. I just came blind on this question. You are kidding me. 89. Okay. Then I did Dark Knight Trilogy. So you skipped all of those. I skipped Returns. Those we don't speak of. And I skipped... Uh, you skipped three. Kilmer. And I forever? skipped Clooney. Dude, forever. Listen, it's... Jim Carrey something to behold. There's nothing to talk about. They're terrible. Schumacher. Okay. Jo Joel Schumacher. The, just, okay. Just, okay. okay. So, so you went from 89 to the trilogy. The Dark Knight Trilogy to the Snyder Trilogy. Oh, Wow. This, Snyder's got a trilogy? Man of Steel, which I know is not Batman, but it's part okay, of that this universe. Is how you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. And then it's Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. And then it's the Justice League the long three one. and a half hour Snyder cut. It might even be longer than that. I think it's almost I think it's over four hours. Okay, four hours. Yeah. I watched that recently. It's it's real good. I can't believe how is it good? It's, I don't know, I, but I, it I, is. I, I, go on. But my son wants to watch The Flash. The other trailer for the Flash movie wants to see it. And I'm like, there's a lot of stuff from these previous, you got to know. Be, yeah, so this is what we're talking about, right? The Flash movie, movie brings out Keaton. probably a multiverse where multiple Batfleck and Keaton are both in it. Okay, okay. So I wanted to, so, what? I'm excited. Okay, so best Batman. Now, I mean, you're leaving out Pattinson from the I've Batman. I've seen the boy doesn't need that one. For no, 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 Flash. no, no, no. And nor though should. I've seen that three and a half hour movie. Is it three and a half or three twenty? It's a long time. I've seen that movie probably five times. Okay. Lay it because, on me. So. Lay it on me. The best Batman. And then I got a second question. It's about Bruce Wayne. Okay, so we're talking about Bat, not the we're Bruce? We're talking the Bat. That's why I need you to know that. The Bat. There ain't no Bat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Oh, man, the Bat. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Gav got ripped to walk off a roof. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> That's hard. It's real hard. Because not the suit. The suits change. Mm -mm. The guy. I don't think it's Bale. People are going to come to your house over this. Listen. Swear to me. Like that voice. I'm not. I'm not mad. People think it is because they that either that was the first time they saw a Batman or something. And it was listen, like a big time movie. And it was it's, really good. It's, it's safe. But, it, after yeah. the. It takes so. I think it's Pattinson as Batman. I agree. As the in the cowl. He's the best Watching Batman. him in the cowl as a detective glued to the screen. I'm telling you. Can't you get enough. Breathe. You couldn't breathe. Cannot get you enough. You couldn't breathe. It, it's like. It, it, when he goes to help that man, he recoils just like. Well, that's because I, I think Batman invokes terror it, 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 if you're doing in, it properly. He's, in his victims and the people he's trying to save. Agreed. Too. It's okay. I agree. I, we agree. I say the bat. We agree. I say Pattinson. Bruce Wayne. Holy cow. Walking around in a suit and a tie. I'm going bail. I think so. I want it to be Keaton. I do but too. But it's not. I Keaton think... might have the 
the, the, the all like the, together. I, I the whole, and I'm and I'm I'm emotionally compromised because I saw it when I was 11 years old and it, like it was amazing as but, the whole package. Yeah, yeah. But I think as Bale, there's some like when he's drunk at that party, it's like all oh, you. Two, like, oh, oh, you two faced oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> Like, and he, he, he's drunk. I'm like, this yeah. is incredible. Yeah, he's, no, he's, he is. He's, when he's with, with, with Harvey Dent, and he's just like, I believe. <laughs> One party for my friend, you never another, need another dollar again. Doing so, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, let's go. Okay. Best Alfred. Oh, man. It's the Dark Knight trilogy guy. Which is Michael like, Caine. It's Michael Caine. Never. Like, it's he's, it's, he's the best. <sighs> it, it, it's it's him. Are you going to go watch the Flash movie? Yeah. If Keaton wasn't in it, I wouldn't give a rip. No, that's the only reason. <laughs> I ri- saw it. I'm like, oh, oh man. I, I'm seeing that this yep, summer. <laughs> yep, okay. I don't, yeah, okay. Speaking of uh, the Batman, what's up with drugs, dude? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay. Ask the question. I was... Uh, um, walking in the world as I do and someone said hey Pastor Nesto and I was like and I context helps where do I know someone from mm-hmm. I never know if people know me from do you know me from Brighton or Fenton or the sneaking Encore now like so I'm always like oh hey and I try to and then they tell me where they know me from so they know me from the Encore they said I have mm-hmm. a question I'm like what do you got and they asked about drugs they asked a lot of questions about drugs. So we're going to walk through drugs. And we have four major questions about drugs to ask today. And this is a tougher question. This is more relevant to the Christian than it used to be. Because we would tell people always obey the law, regardless of how you feel about it. And that's the first question. Can a Christian use illegal drugs? Illegal? No. I th- and why? Because we, we respect the ordinance of man is put there by God. We, we obey the government. We obey the laws. We render to Caesar. We pay our taxes. We obey until the law asks us to compromise our faith or the preaching of the gospel. That's it. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. That's right. Romans 13, verse 1. Because of that, we don't... We It is a non-starter. Like, non-starter. Mm-mm. But marijuana across America has mm-hmm. left... It being illegal and has now yeah. become a legal reality it in a works. recreational way as well like it's not just a medical no, reality no. It's, um, it's like if you just want this you can go buy it in a lot of places um so much so i've had Including to counsel people who are very conservative christians older yeah. grew up in the christian church and they've been told by a doctor let's say it's a, a patient with leukemia and mm-hmm. marijuana does help with appetite i mean right. the jokes about munchies it's a real thing you right. know it makes right. you snack delicious right um but uh this one lady was prescribed and she's like is this a sin i'm like no this is this is a uh a prescription right. to help you on this journey as you are going through chemotherapy as you're going through all these things that are happening to you you're not eating you're losing weight this is going to help you eat you're not sinning against the lord this is not illegal so that's none of that now i will say unless there is a true conviction in her heart or whoever about something against it maybe there was a previous battle with addiction oh or something. man you, you yeah know, so i though i have permission and though it would not be a sin to do it in this medical case i might be convicted about it so that i would agree but yes it's no. why a lot of our friends who have surgery don't want opioids afterwards yeah they yeah because they feel been, yeah 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 feeling yeah. the effects yeah. of that opioid um pain will remind them of the opioids of heroin yes or, and so they can't go like how many people have we known who've been clean have surgery Unknowingly take I, the medicine, and it reawakens that hunger. I've seen it ruin families, like and unreal. It was, and it was it started through a surgery or something. I mean, there are people out there probably listening that know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, question two: Can a Christian use legal drugs recreationally? On the surface, with a lot more to say from this point forward, yes, they could. Could freedom in Christ is a real thing? Yes, they can. There's a lot to say right now. Let's say some of it. So the first thing I think about is... So yes, but... uh, So just as a matter of fact, I guess, yes, you could. First thing I think about is my testimony. You can drink. You smoke marijuana. You can. You can. There's a lot of recreational drugs. And these these things... So go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. So... So just for people wondering, you know, it's probably people screaming right now. Like they're going to be, what about that? We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the <laughs> temple of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about a sound mind. Like we're, we're going to talk, I understand all that, but on the surface, on paper, if you will, 
because it is legalized, you could. You could. Now, you have to ask a lot of questions about a lot of things beyond even drugs, whether or not you should. Right. I, I can go in any establishment. I Can I go into, you know, a, a, a bar where people are undressed? I can. Like, you, I, I am free, but there are a lot of things that then, you know, you're going to bump into where you sh- maybe should not. But, uh, okay, so I think about my testimony. I All right, so I want to open gonna, the I'm gonna word, baby. The Bible Let's on do it. One, like, a lot. Um, so let's see. In First Corinthians ten, you have some things. That's right where we go, dude. That's where you go. That's where you got to go on, on this, and it's going to apply to a lot of things. It's going to apply to. And we were talking about movies earlier. You got to think about that. Like you, you got to. Th- you you can turn something on if you like. Uh, maybe you shouldn't. You know. Um, yeah. So uh, ten twenty three, First Corinthians. All things are lawful. Not meaning the law of the land necessarily, though we submit to that. But they are lawful. Before, in the Christian life. Yeah, in, in, as a Christian, under God, I am allowed. As King James all, says, all things are permissible for And that's me. the better word, honestly. It is permi- it, permissible. is mean, a I great mean, word. The, the king does and does not get it sometimes, but that, that is the right. It's permissible. It's allowable. So all things are allowable, permissible, lawful, but not all things are profitable. And that's the question you got to ask. So that's one thing. Uh, all things are lawful, but not all things edify or build up are valuable for your faith, your testimony, your walk and growth, as well as others, yours and others. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. Anything, so they use something controversial of their day, meat sacrifice to idols. Anything that is sold in the meat market without asking questions for conscience sake, saying you can do that, you can eat that. You can get a discount meat from, the, from, from Zeus Butcher. You can. For the earth is the Lord's and all it contains, including marijuana and everything else. Uh, if one of the unbelievers invites you and you want to go, eat anything that is set before you without asking questions for conscience sake. So he's saying you don't have to ask, was this like in a ritual ceremony for an idol? You don't have to do that because it probably was in some ways at that time. But if anyone says to you, this meat sacrificed to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for conscience sake. So we could go on and on here. But w- the heart of what we're talking about is a stumbling block to our testimony. And so, can you use recreational drugs or marijuana? Apparently, freedom has, the believer has freedom, but should not use his freedom in a way that can hurt other people. Right. The fact that it's free is not the pass for all things. That's We can hold this card up, and people love to do it. Well, the Bible says I'm free in Christ. Right. It also says you're a slave to Christ, meaning the mission and the testimony of Jesus for the gospel. So it also says we crucify the flesh. So Dang straight it, it does. It, it, like you got to, like we can't, people love to hold that card around, you know. Listen, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 6, 12, same, That's what I have. same it's passage. It's just because Paul literally, yeah. this 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 theme for him mm-hmm. is is literally... Freedom is big for Paul. Look at Galatians. Mm-hmm. It's for freedom he's that always, Christ has set you free. He's always unchaining us from the law. Yes. From, yes. Do not be bound. But there's also in freedom a responsibility. Good way to say it. And he says this, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. Same exact phrase. Yep. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. I will not be ruled by anything. Right. That's a powerful thing. because. Right. There are not sinful things that can enslave. A hundred percent. Video games can enslave. Movies can enslave. Entertainment can enslave. Social yeah. media can enslave. A girlfriend or boyfriend can enslave. Very good example. Like go. Like, That's good. That can these things that are meant for work, good. Money, work, possessions, money, houses, you know, property, family. Yes. Yes. Children, parents, <laughs> wife. Blah, blah, blah. I, I, they can Let own me go back you. And bury my dad, my dad, man, I can't go with you. That's right. That's I a mean, biblical example in the Gospels. He's, you know, it, 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 yes. I will not be ruled by anything. Right. And here's what recreational use. So, think about drugs. The reason we like them is because they do something to us or for us. Yeah. I have a book here called Intoxication. Uh, it's not a Christian book. It's a psych- psychology guy. And he says that um, intoxication is the fourth human drive. Okay. There's like hunger. Uh, I think it's, what does he say? He says um, food, sleep, and sex are the three drives 
They are right. universal to all humanity. Yeah, all right. He says intoxication is the fourth. That every wow. culture in the world looks to get high. And isn't that the truth? Go to any culture. Go to any India. Time. They have coconuts fermenting in the sun, dude. Yeah. People find a way to find something to make the dog stop barking. Yeah. I mean, it's every every culture wants to feel like to just feel different. Mm -hmm. And this is from eight. I mean, look, go to the Mayans, the Incas, Native Americans, Chinese. Everybody. Everyone has stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, opium. And, like it's crazy. Yeah, it's been there from the beginning. Okay, been there so since Noah was drunk off the ark. It's been there straight up. Yeah. Um, there seems to be a theme in scripture. Well, before I go to that. So by owning, you're talking about mastered. You're talking about intoxication right here. I think it is. I'm well. saying. Or be, by anything. being Drugs very quickly can become something I can't live without. Okay. That's being ruled by something. Yeah. This thing has become a crutch that I need without it. I can't survive. If something in your life becomes something you can't live without, it has grown too large and you have to crucify it. I don't, Just, care, if it's, I don't care if it's caffeine or coffee in the morning. Well, that's why I was going to bring that up. I mean, if that, if that thing has grown to a place of necessity, it has grown too large. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we, me and you both sat down. We're like, I got no coffee. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. All right, listen. So, all right. So somebody's going to say, I agree. Doesn't own me. Listen. I don't do it in front of people. I, I, don't, I don't do it in a way that it would be a stumbling block. It's legal. Bible says all things in moderation. It's it's in moderation. Now what? So I'm 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 these are all I, things I've heard from people and 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 tried to consider. Someone will say, you drink multiple coffees to go up, a Red Bull, all this stuff. Nobody says anything about it. You do that to go up, somebody does the, the equal amount or even more moderate to go down. To go down. What's the difference? A, 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 a glass of wine, a, a, a hit off of a marijuana legalized medically approved cigarette or or an double edible. gummy yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah whatever and, and 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 it takes them down and i because of nature so you go up and i go down and, and it's all in moderation it's not at the cost of my testimony it doesn't own me i i can put it down if i need to that's between them and the lord whether that's true now what i think you're free now let's talk about the temple of the holy spirit though for a second before i get to that before we get to that i want to say this is that i've had people in my life i have a buddy of mine a good friend of mine and he so every Sunday, I have a Coca-Cola. It's a glass of Coke. You do? I, it's your reward? I, it's my reward for a, a day serving this. the Lord. Oh, I understand. I come yep. home after just, there's nothing left in the tank, mm -hmm. and I get it out of the fridge, and I, and I drink my, my ice-cold uh, ice, ice cold Coca-Cola mm -hmm. from Mexico, and it's just, I used to drink Coke every day. It was my, I mean, who needed water? I had Coke. Mm -hmm. I had to put it, put it back, because it was just, it just became too big for me. Yeah, sure. Um, I had friends of mine who treated uh, Guinness like my Coke. Yeah. At the end of the work week on Friday, he had one Guinness. Mm -hmm. That guy, he's a Christian, never been drunk in his life. And I'm like, I think you're free, bro. Like, you're not abusing it. It's not hurting you financially. You are responsible. You've never lost control of your, you know, your faculties. And I'm like, I mean, I can't do that. I, if I were to drink today, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drink one drink. You know, so I can't, I can't go back. To You're that. saying that out of uh, an understand, a self awareness and a conviction about your own ability my own to be mastered ability. by certain things. I will be mastered by alcohol, so I can't touch it. Sure, but this brother in Christ I had, I don't tell him. He's he the Christ owns him, yeah. and he belongs to Christ. So I'm like, it seems like you are not in sin or violation. Do as you will. Mm -hmm. um, that's a rare guy to find, though. It's a rare guy. It's a rare case, and it's a very cautious allowance. Like there are things that we're allowed to but do. That I don't want to overstep Paul. Like Paul no, gives I know. freedom people, to people. People do it all the time. And I don't want to chain them up according to my wounds or my understood family history, or even your personal yeah weakness conviction. Like, yeah, yeah, personal yeah they have a different one. Like they might not be able to own a TV so, because they're driving crazy, or they might not be able to have a tablet because it'll lead to a different kind of addiction. Maybe someone's trying to have caffeine and you, you drink coffee and they're like, can't believe you drink coffee in front of me. Like, mm -hmm. I can't ask the world to change because I'm in a battle. Yeah, I understand. Let me ask a couple of different questions. Okay, go. Okay, let me ask this though. Okay, so, so far we can find a case, though cautious and I think narrow, but nevertheless for freedom. I think I'm outside of the biblical confines to say otherwise. On that. I think so on, too. On what we've talked about so far. And some people want people want to push you in a corner where you can't live freely, but I think 
I th- if you're not well, mastering- well, here's the thing. We're doing it in so many places, but our own our hypocrisy is showing because we're allowing it for a lot of things people oh, don't so realize. Oh, so many things. Yeah, there's much. My to- debt's out of control. Exactly. My, I, I, think in, I have no. I, I've, <sighs> you're, you, I mean, the, the language we listen to in movies, some of the things we tolerate in movies or television. My own mouth, the jokes type. I tell. Yeah, yes, yes. And, and some of that is, in fact, sin, and it's not even in freedom. But some of it is in freedom, and, and we're looking away. And so we, you know, all right. So. I'm not, I'm not trying to justify anything here. I'm just saying that we got to be honest about stuff, and, and legalism tempts us not to be. Uh, but let's add another one. In context of sexual immorality, but he does say, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. He goes on and he talks again about immorality. So we can talk about sexual immorality, but we have, if he says glorify God in your body, I do not think we are out of scriptural line to go, if what I eat, if what I drink, if what I do, if the lack of sleep or whatever is harmful to my body, that is a territory where I have not glorified God in my body. So let's talk about recreational drug use. We've found freedom so far down the list. Is it harmful to the body? If so, how much? Like, is this not glorifying God in our body? Uh, as well as there are scriptures to talk about of a sound mind. So if we're that's where I want to go. In, in, so we talk about intoxication. We're sober about minded. Is sober a, minded. Like there seems to be this theme in scripture of do not give up your faculties. Like you need to keep your mind sharp so that mm-hmm. you don't sin against the Lord you love. Yeah. Like um, First Peter five eight, right? Be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. For your adversary, adversary the, the devil, devil, as a roaring lion, right. seeketh whom he may devour. That's right. The king's English baby. That's right. Only. Um, <laughs> and forever. That's what the Lord wanted. <laughs> Listen, it was good enough for Paul. Good long, enough for me. It was as long as we have the apocrypha. <laughs> but uh, um, that okay. idea of being sober is not just alcohol. It's just saying your mind. So if you're not sleeping, your mind's wrong. That's not good. Okay, this is a good point. Being this sober is... means your mind is clear to make decisions, to absorb data. That means, dude, last night, me and the leadership of our church, we took some time to just meet at the sanctuary, and we just prayed for mm-hmm. for a long season together because we have so much going on in ministry, and we have had a, a real bad loss in our church, and there's so much like pressure Mm-hmm. and hurt we just took time to rest in the lord and we all needed more than we knew like when we started praying i just felt like that's good it's almost like i whew, it just you could we just on a side note we can sin against the lord in our service of the lord you you, 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 you cannot steward your, your body your mind yes. the 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 idea the heart of sabbath rest can be absent from your life and that's a sin against God. Spurgeon called it the sin of ministerialism. That's good. That's better than what I just said. I mean, this is what he called it, the sin of ministerialism. Yeah. Because we're just we're talking about God, not talking to him. If I'm up late Saturday night, not, mm-hmm. not, not, not I, I am, we're given this, so yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, so, all right, so, but sober-mindedness goes, be, people love to be like, well, that means you got to be sober, can't drink. Like, okay, maybe, it sharp. maybe, but it, it means a lot of other things, and you're giving yourself a pass over here. But let's talk about it in, in regard to, just to use a simple example and widely accepted now, marijuana. Um, does it violate sober-mindedness? Because yes, we can check all these boxes. Is it is it a is it problematic or sinful with regard to sober mindedness? I think it can be, but it may not always be. Again, with moderation. When it comes to marijuana, as a shepherd, I would say be very careful. It's new. Um, it's legal. It's legalness. Well, it's newly new. legal. It's certainly not new. But. Newly legal. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Also, my, everyone's against cigarettes, and everyone loves smoking weed. It's like inhalation of smoke is still a reality that you need to deal with. You know, like, yeah. Um, yeah. So, as a shepherd, I would say, be careful. Uh, the recreational use, if it's a crutch, just be careful to be mastered by it, because I think it can happen very quickly. Well, also, if you're getting high, high, like high, high, whatever that means, like that's where the conviction of the Holy Spirit has to come in. Like a, a a glass of alcohol is going to affect anybody to some degree. This person different and different and so forth. Is that drunkenness? Well, this is where you're going to have to 
settle some things with the Lord and and be willing to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But if you're getting baked out of your mind, you're already over the line of, if you want to say drunkenness or sober minded, you're, you're out of line. You've given control of your faculties up. You've, you've, yeah, you've, you're, you're mastered in that moment for sure. And that's a problem. Now, we have, to, we have two more questions to deal with. We, we're already 25 in, so we got to. Okay. So we're saying we need to we freedom, need to. but that's what we're saying. Freedom, but be wise and don't lie to yourself. Right? Don't lie to yourself. We are, I think we are saying that, yeah. Okay. It's a very cautious territory we need to walk on, but I don't want to make the Bible say or, or restrict something that it may not. Question three. Can drugs open us up to higher planes of spirituality? I forgot about this question. What are they asking? Listen, there's a, there's, there's a movement in our culture. Uh, it's big on the West Coast. Uh, mushrooms being used for yeah. therapy. Yeah, I know a big podcaster talks about this all the time. All the time. It's, it's a, and people swear by it. Um, so what, what do they say? Like to, to, to heal emotional trauma, to diagnose... Psycho, you're, 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 psychoanalysis. Yeah, you're going into the unconscious. You're, yeah, you're, you're fixing something deeply. You are allowing the unconscious to come to the surface yeah. in these um these trips. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. So maybe yeah, I've heard, I've even heard of people saying again, this is in the pagan world. I'm not necessarily validating this that it fixed something in them forever. Yeah, I've heard the same thing. Can psychotropic drugs? Can drugs open up the, 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 the higher plane of spirituality? Um, maybe biblically there's not a lot to say on this like there's not I would say this using altered states of uh, as uh, using altered states as a means of therapy it's very suspect to the believer in Christ as a believer in Christ I think we believe that through prayer confession community repentance righteous living we definitely believe we that. can experience true emotional healing in this life we believe that with Christ, we can actually grow and heal. Okay, so when I say maybe, I'm, I think I'm talking about dark spirituality is what I was referring I to. I want to get to that. Yeah, I'm not talking about friends of mine. could it fix you and the Holy no. Spirit work because you're on mushrooms? I do not think that, no. I have friends of mine who have talked about, I mean, I mean whether they've they, done all kinds of acid and, and mm -hmm. mushrooms, mm -hmm. and they say they've seen some, they've, they've encountered some things in those moments of altered states of So when I say maybe, that's what I'm talking about. I think you swing a door open. It might even be why the Bible warns us to be sober and vigilant for your adversary, the devil. He's coming. I think it's very, it, it very well may open you up to, to other planes of consciousness, but I don't know if you want to open, knock on those doors at all. I don't know if you want to be open to receive that signal. Oh, I don't. I think you're going to get more than you want, and and you may never recover. Um, so I think, yeah, that's possible, but maybe only in the darkest sense. I think you would dull yourself to the light. It's 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 not. You're not going to get more light from that. I don't believe that. Am I wrong to think that? I, I don't think you're wrong. I, I don't think, think so because the Bible warns against that. Like well, again, sober-minded. That is the that's what I'm saying. It. That's it. the Bible are, saying you you shouldn't be doing this. That's an Eastern view of, of yeah. healing versus a Western. That's like if I just turn off my ability to think, maybe the yeah. unconscious feeling mumbo jumbo will. Maybe I shake the Lego box in a yeah, a space it, will pop out. Yeah, it, re it reassembles in a in a more healed state. I I don't really believe that. I think people could feel that and even experience that, but I think it would probably be a, a surface level fix that is actually a deception of what's actually wrong with their soul. And could blind them to that and open them to the darkness. I do believe that. You could you could open a door to hell in your life. And question four. Can God come to someone while they are high? Sure. God can come to somebody in the throes of the darkest, deepest places of sin and darkness and, and drunkenness and immorality and demon worship. God can appear and rescue someone out of the miry clay. Sure he can. God spoke to Saul through a medium. He did. Wow, that's crazy. God spoke through the through the God spoke to a, a pagan nation through their prophet whom they hired to curse Israel. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. And that's good. I mean, it's it's well, he came to the drunken party for 
uh, Belshazzar and wrote on the wall that you're a dead man, but yeah, that he came and they were bl- Belshazzar was drinking, getting drunk out of the holy vessels from the temple in Israel and had a bunch of women and craziness. They woke Daniel up in the night and they're like, "Wow, old and man Daniel, talking dude. about sobering up a party." Like, yeah, but that so, old guy. Wa- w- w- I mean, it's cr- yeah. So I mean, God spoke in the midst of debauchery to those guys. Uh, yes, he can. I don't think it would be fruitful here to tell some stories of my own life. Uh, I don't really need to do that. But I have had things like this happen to me when I was in the clutches of sin. And I was headlong down the tunnel and I felt God wake me up. <laughs> yeah, just sober now, slap me to reality in, the, in a dark place. Now, just because God can pick you at high does not mean you should get high to meet with God. No, it wasn't. It no, wasn't no. good. No, no. Like, <laughs> it wasn't a good meeting. It some, was, but some people might prescribe altered states of consciousness oh, yeah, for like, spiritual mm-mm, contact. Mm-mm. That is not. Okay, we not have what, yeah. the word this, and the spirit. Yeah, this is good to point out. I don't need this workaround. Very good thing to point out. When we say he can speak to you, he can speak to you. It's probably going to be a voice of correction or salvation to someone in sin. This is not how we get closer or meet no, with God. This is not, not what you want to be. No. You're, you're probably going to hear word, a message that is not And great. we have the stinking spirit of God dwelling within us if we are yeah. children of the Lord. Yes. Um, so just because he can save you out of that, speak to you out of that, does not mean you go to that means Mm-mm. To get that. No, that's like, you know, like, do you want God to come to you when you're in the heart of the sea with Jonah? Like, you'd rather just obey from the dock. Like that, <laughs> it's like that. Like, you know, he'll come to you, but like, it's it's not going to be, yeah. <laughs> you want to be saved from the dock. That's, um, that's true, man. Um, so. That's a good question you guys are asking, whoever is writing that in. That's really good. And uh, that's insightful and worth thinking about. In our culture, drugs are becoming a... Alcohol has always been a part of the mm-hmm. American life. Yep. It has. Yep. And drugs has just risen in in popularity over yeah. our lifetime. Drugs went from a stoner kind of culture to mainstream. It's like tattoos. Tattoos went from bikers to Starbucks. To pastors. <laughs> so you know they have a past. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say anything. All right, listen, let's run this down. And, like, can we do this? Can we check some boxes? Can we start and, and then say some things? Like, check to, the boxes. To bring the whole thing. Okay. Or, so let's respond to everything from the top to the bottom. Okay. So can you, if it is, we're going to assume can a legal. A, can a Christian use illegal drugs? No. No, no not, not if they're illegal. You're out. Can a Christian use drugs recreationally? So let's start with yes. If, it, if, it, if it's going to be a stumbling block or hinders your testimony? No. No. If, so if it, it controls you, if it controls you and you're mastered by it, addict to it, no. No. If you're not sober, if it takes if you're away not your sober minded, think, yep. No. If I think those three are pretty strong. Is there another one? I think those are the three. I, all right. If it if it hinders the health of the temple of the Holy Spirit that is your body, no. And I would say there are cases where moderation does not, including marijuana. I'm not a doctor. I don't know things, but. Some moderation of alcohol, some moderate. It does not. I mean, a lot of people are doing things w- at the grocery store, you know, that are way worse than a moderation of drug. So I'm not saying on the surface all drug use is bad for the temple of the Holy Spirit that is your body. But if it is, uh, if, if it's ruining your body, it, it's out. So then all of that within consideration, you be very careful. And then you come to the final thing, which is what do you feel from the Holy Spirit? You know, have you sought the Lord? Is there you a, prayed about this? Yeah, th- there's a there's a, a freedom down a path or there is a conviction that even though you can say, I'm clean on all these, I just feel like God has told me to lay it down. I've, I've sat down with people in, in an office counseling. Um, I, I had a, a lady once and the thought of facing life clear-minded, she cried in horror at the thought of it. Because mm, yes. for her, these substances, and listen, Intoxication. Pe- people are mad scientists. With intoxication. Mm-hmm. We'll find ways to get high. Like yeah. the human. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's something. Um, we've answered. And only lastly, um, should you use drugs to meet the Lord? No, absolutely not. No, like can he? Yes. Is that the means you should try to partake to get there? No. Mm-mm. Belshazzar's on the phone. He's saying probably not. <laughs> like, you, you don't want that meeting. 
you don't want that meeting. Um, this it's a lot more. This is it's a tough one, and everyone. I mean, the Rock Church you minister to a lot of people in addiction, mm-hmm. um, whether it's you know celebrate recovery, whether it's you know uh, recovery small groups. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any uh, recovery groups here at the Rock people that could go to if they're battling yeah, we recovery have a, right yeah, now? Yeah, we have a Tuesday night group. Uh, we, we'd be happy to sit with them, connect them, reach out to us what here What time Tuesday night? What time? It's like 7 o'clock. Okay, uh, right here on the, on the campus? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. That's, that's, if you are battling with addiction, whether it's alcohol or drug use, um, you need to get help. As a believer in Christ, yeah. you have to get out of that life. You yeah. have to put that down. Um, you, yep. you you're must convicted being, about something, listen to this. You want to talk to somebody? We'd love to talk to you. You must stop being a slave to this drug so you can be a more faithful servant to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so with that said, grace and peace to you. We hope this was a help to you and yours. God bless you.